things that make horses buck is too much energy, overnutrition. I don't know if the grass is any stronger if you change feed, if you started giving 17 supplements or, you know, that, that's one thing. So if you say absolutely not, it's on worse grass, it's on worse pasture, okay. Cross that off the list. Uh, sometimes they get a neurological, a pinched back or, or something like that. Uh, they're uncomfortable. You know what they used to be comfortable with? <clears throat> you get on them and you know, their back hurts and you know, it's just like you sticking them with a spur. I mean, you know, if you've ever experienced anything like that, it's, you know, you, you're okay till that nerve grabs you. And it's just like somebody stuck you with a needle. And it's, and it's always in that first, like, few steps that I know if she's going to be good or not. But after that, then she's, like, I can ride her. Okay, from the point that you throw the saddle on to the time you get on, what's your procedure? I put the saddle on at the trailer, and I don't even, I don't cinch her up. It's like barely, I don't even ever cinch her up very tight unless I'm going to make a run. Um, but it's not even like fastened, essentially, fairly loose, but just touching her. Um, and then we walk about 200 feet or so to the arena. And then on foot or horseback? On foot. And then <clears throat> I'll cinch her up just a little bit. Um, like I said, I don't ever cinch her up very tight because my saddle fits her really well. It doesn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then now I've gotten to, once I cinch her up a little bit, I'll lunge her just on the lead rope. And um, that kind of lets her get a little bit of energy out but she doesn't like run around me anymore um, and then I get on okay so when you cinch her up whichever time any time I always you, have her take a few steps do you notice what her head does I mean her head just stays there doesn't rise at all her expression doesn't change at all so. Nope, that's not the answer. If you don't think so, that means you don't know. And if you don't know, that would be some an area that I would say you need to pay more attention. So why is she getting cinchy all of a sudden? Because you're not paying attention. But if if that's it. Uh -huh. So here here's the deal: when you cinch up a horse. It happens so often. I'm not saying that, that this is your case. I'm just saying I've observed this so many times. You're tying, you got a horse tied, and in a stall like this is the worst place for this to, or the most likely place for this to start, as opposed to tied to a trailer or a fence or something like that. So here your horse is in this slot, tied facing forward. You cinch him up, <clears throat> and the horse goes, ow. And you hawk it in him a little bit more because you need to get to that next hole or it's still super loose in your opinion but the horse has already thrown his head up and went hey and, and anyway you hawk it into him a little bit more and some cases they're they're cinchy they you know they go to step back because they can't go forward they can't go right they can't go left so they step back and pull back break something, fall over backwards. Okay, now we taught the horse to be cinchy and fall over backwards, pull back. As opposed to, now that it could be anything down from that, where he's just a little annoyed. But still, we back him out, that's not good. If I'm suspicious at all that this horse could be uncomfortable or could get uncomfortable, I like to lead him forward and turn him around in a forward motion in that stall well, I forgot one thing that makes it even worse. This horse is just cinched up, tied up here. We just put the halter around his neck and then take our bridle and go whack him in the teeth. And that gets him to pull back, too. And people say, well, that, he's never done that before. I don't know what's got into him. 
Well, it's, you know, I've seen that happen plenty of times, and it's obvious what got into them. You know, here they are, Sanchi. They don't have any place to go. They're tied. You bang them in the teeth or the gum or whatever it might be, pinch their tongue, trying to get them to open their mouth, and they take a step back. Now the halter grabs them here. It wasn't expecting that. There's just all this unexpected discomfort. So then he falls back and does all the other stuff. But if we stay under the radar there and we do get him around, he's just a tad cinchy. He raised his head like that when you went to get that last hole. Now you lead him outside and he's still not comfortable. Let's stay. You hock it into him again and his head's still up. And you know, whether you lead him up a step or just get on him right there. So the deal is, the lunging and everything, it might get you by, but obviously it didn't that one time. So well, I didn't even lunge her because she had never. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what caught me off guard. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. But, just blew up. but you didn't know that stove was hot till you burnt your hand. Now that you burnt your hand, you learn to kind of check and make sure there's no heat coming off it before you touch it. Yeah. So that's what we need to do with these horses. And you get bucked off and kicked and run over enough times, you learn to kind of be a little more sensitive to that stove and you don't just bail in there and get burnt. She does step backwards sometimes when I go to cinch her up. That's not a good indication. Why does she step backwards? She's trying that's... to get me away from where the cinch is. Well, she's oh. not comfortable. Yeah. And that goes back to the scenario I'm talking about. If she's not comfortable. And that gets to be a routine of going backwards and to the point that it could turn into pulling back. And this this cinchy and pulling back quite often go hand in hand for the same reason. So other scenario. That colt I saddled yesterday. He hasn't been saddled for I don't know, last fall. We had plenty of time off. He was in pretty good shape. He's fairly gentle, but it's pretty green. And I I can't say I've never seen him rode, but he's they rode even Runa when I wasn't around to anymore and just see him ride by. But I don't really know how he handles, basically. Uh, I just helped start him, and that's all I really know about him. Uh, most of his riding is when I was on the road. So I led him in there, saddled him, made sure he came forward. Turn him around, put the hack more on him, cinch him up a little bit more, watched his head. And anytime, especially on a greener horse, whether it's the first saddling or the tenth saddling, when I'm pulling that laddie go up, I'm looking at their head. If they go, stop right there. No more. Why are they raising their head? Because they're unsure, they're uncomfortable. So don't go to the next hole. And that's the thing. And the, the stiff laddie go, like I showed you the other day, you went to pulling on that. And yeah. here's a big old bubble in the laddie go up here. And we're trying to get that out. Well, here we are focused here. We're not looking at the whole picture. We're predators, we got tunnel vision. So <clears throat> if that's the case, your laddie go isn't rendering smooth. Pull it down, kind of kind of lift that, try to try to work that slack out of there without pulling that ring any tighter. So I mean those are just little things. But that, then what do I do when she does raise her head or lead her off? Until she's relaxed again. Lead her off. And it might only take one step, three steps. Pull it a little bit more. That much more. A few more steps, that much more. I mean, if you really want to be on the safe side, you might pull that laddie go 10 times, you know, from here to that loader over there. But I, it's not, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the lunging, but you can lunge them and still make these other mistakes and get bucked off. Yeah. Well, basically what I'm saying is I'm paying attention to where that horse is comfortable and where they're uncomfortable. And I'm not, uh, kind of breaking that barrier. I'll go to it and then say, okay, let's walk a little bit. And like I say, it might only be that you're pulling that laddie go a, a half a hole, just, just a few inches. And say, ah, that's enough. I hear you. 
let's walk a little bit. And again, it might just be a little bit. Another thing that gets, especially colts that don't know, here you are cinching that cinch up. And they feel it coming. It's kind of pulling, especially if I use these neoprene cinches, which as starting colts, I like them because you didn't get belly sore near like you do with the cloth cinch. Uh, but the neoprene cinch, the neoprene pad uh, has a little stick to it. And when it goes to pulling that hair, when you, when you get on or when you cinch them up, anytime it goes to pulling that hair, this, ha this colt has no experience with this sensation. Ollie, he's on the high alert. Uh, he's very, very sensitive to what's going on. And how does that horse know if you're just gonna pull the hair, you're gonna pluck some hair out, or you're gonna pull the hide off of them, or you're gonna tear a bunch of flesh out? Where's it gonna stop? All he knows is it's going the wrong direction. Got a little discomfort, maybe a little pain. Where is it gonna stop? They're prey animals, they fear that, and so where are they gonna stop? You know, we say, oh, don't be stupid, that, that ain't gonna hurt you. That's not how they think, that's how we think, but that's what gets us in trouble. So, I mean, with, with that, and coming back to the cinchy part, that's how horses get cinchy. If they go, oh, what's this? And you just keep talking into it, they go, how far is this going? Where is it going to stop? And so they panic and they buck or fall over backwards. That's, that's all that is. It's, it's a panic. Fight or flight. If they don't run off, bucking is a form of fight. Mountain lions are on their back. They're going to try to buck the mountain lion off. That's the fight. And once you engage that, I mean, and, and back to it starts right here when they raise their, their head and their eye gets a little big. Don't ignore that. These, several of my horses are cinchy for that reason. They wasn't cinchy for several years. And I started having assistants or other people stop them. And then they get cinchy. Because I never hawked it into them. They never, basically I never prepared them for that saddling. Then they had a bad saddling or two, and shit. now they all turn around and want to bite you, and you know, all these things going on. It's like, you didn't do that for years. Where did that come from? Well, that's where it came from. So now I have a problem with these horses that didn't have So don't underestimate them. You can't be the old, you, know, you should know better. No, the person should know better. Otherwise, we're going to get in trouble. Okay? So yeah. just try to be more aware. And <clears throat> don't be looking at that next hole. Just watch watch their eye. Watch their head. And the minute they do that, stop. Move their feet a little bit. <clears throat> and it might just be a couple of steps. It might be 20 minutes. But whatever whatever it takes, you know, and you'll learn your horse. And all your laddie go, I mean, there's things that you can do to make it work better. Sabrina, you're going to be on YouTube if you sit there just so you know. You're okay, yeah? Uh, don't bother me. You might want to do your hair for him to be on YouTube. <laughs> Keep him not from that. <laughs> I messed up.